I was born and raised in St. Kevin Parish in Flushing, New York. It's a beautiful parish built on the blood and sweat of Irish immigrants in the 1920s. We have the longest aisle in the Diocese of Brooklyn, which means we do a lot of weddings. It's really a lovely parish community. The parish has one flaw, and it's this, that the capacity of the church is 1,600 people, which for reference is double the size of this basilica. Its parking lot has 24 spots. Perhaps if you're running late to church and you're not willing to circle the block five times hoping that someone will leave and free up another spot, you might be so desperate that what you're inclined to do is drive into the parking lot and even though the 24 spots are filled, you can squeeze your way into the roadway and just keep filling in the lot until it is completely full. And then pray that you manage to get out before the guy you've parked in wants to get out. This doesn't always go so well. And it used to drive my pastor crazy because we would be in mass and we'd be sharing the sign of peace and we'd be offering each other the love of Jesus and then 37 seconds later, out in the parking lot, all there was was cursing, yelling, and a fair bit of honking. How easy it is for us, how easy it is for us to disassociate ourselves from what we're supposed to be in here, what we do in here in mass, and how we live our lives out there, out there once we leave the confines of the church. Today's gospel reminds us that there is a necessary and inherent integrity between who we are and what we celebrate in here and who God calls us to be out there. That there's an integrity between our interior life and our exterior life. And that integrity is a challenge not just of the parking lot, it's really an, a challenge of the entirety of our Christian faith. There's a temptation for us to think that faith should be something that's a private and personal matter. That it's something I do for me. And I'll do my thing, and you do your thing, and as long as we stick to our own things, then we'll happily keep the peace. That our lives of faith should be bounded by our personal lives and not cross into the lives of others. That's how we all get along in a plural society, we're told. Even our own narrative of sanctification and growth and holiness can fall into the same trap. That the way that God is calling me to grow in holiness is entirely of my own creation and fits in my own little box. That I go to Mass four times a week, I say a rosary every day, I spend umpteen hours in adoration, that all of these private individual encounters with the Lord should add up to my sanctity. And as long as I am good with God, the rest of you, you, you got your own deal going. But friends, the gospel reminds us today that we cannot, we cannot live our lives of faith as an entirely private or personal affair. It is impossible for us to live as singular individuals and call ourselves Christians. We need, we need others in our life. We need the community of faith. We need the body of Christ. And we cannot, we cannot grow in holiness if we are unwilling to help others grow closer to Jesus. 
our growth and sanctity will be stunted. We'll be stunted if we're not willing to cross the threshold and bring Jesus into the lives of others to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. There is an inherent external and public element and dimension to the life of faith. The call to go outwards from this space and to bring the Lord, to bring salt, to bring light to the world around us. Whether they want it or not. Whether they like it or not. If we're to live the Christian life well, it by necessity must impact the lives of others. It cannot be just our own thing. It is insufficient for us to say, well, I'm good with God. Do whatever you want. Because if that's our attitude, if we are completely uncaring and unwilling to care about the holiness of others, the sanctity of others, then we're not good with God. Then we're not living the life that Jesus calls us to live. It could be easy for us for us to think that this public expression of faith can be overly harsh. That means going door to door and knocking and saying, do you know Jesus Christ? And certainly that's not necessarily the only way or the best way to accomplish this. It's easy for us to narrow down our vision of the public expression of faith to the hot button cultural things that you know, we need to have a nativity in the town square. We need to have our keep Christ and Christmas sign on the front lawn. Those public expressions of faith, they're important. They are necessary. As the prophet Isaiah reminds us this morning, they're secondary. They're secondary to the primary expression of faith that we have as Christians. Which is to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to liberate the oppressed and the imprisoned. Our faith, our faith lived well, is not just about some public demonstration of what we believe in sign, but it means the very content of who we are must reflect Jesus Christ to others. It shapes, changes, and forms the way we think about who we are and what we are to the people and world around us. So perhaps what the prophet Isaiah invites us to consider this morning, perhaps what the gospel invites us to consider this morning in being the salt of the earth and the light for the world, is to ask ourselves how it is our lives of faith proclaim the life of Jesus. Do people find in us the love, the mercy, the compassion that they are to find in Jesus Christ? Are we willing to share the love that he gives us here? Are we willing to give the grace that he shares with us here? Are we willing to expend all that he gives us here so that others might know him through us? Maybe that means healing an old grudge that's hung around far too long. Maybe it means thinking twice before we pass that person on the street or on the sidewalk who's in need. Maybe it means being a little bit more thoughtful about how we use the stuff of creation. Maybe it means thinking twice or even praying for that person in our life that we find particularly angering, grating, or annoying. Maybe it means biting our tongue about that public personality that drives us up the wall each and every day we see him or her on the news. Maybe it means cutting someone some slack 
We're giving them the benefit of the doubt when they do something that seeks or seems to displease us. Whatever it might be, if we are willing to love others in the same way that Jesus loves us, if we're willing to be moved by the encounter with Christ that we have here in the Eucharist so that we might bring it out into the world, then we are living our vocation as Christians to the fullest. Then the joy that we are given here and share here is so profuse that it can't help but exude from every ounce and fiber of our being. And so as we gather for Eucharist, as we share in the great goodness that God gives to us in the Eucharist, let's simply commit to opening our hearts and listening to how the Lord might be calling us to be salt and light this day. Who are the hungry, the imprisoned, the oppressed, the naked in our life? And how might we bring the joy and love of Jesus into their lives?